Hey everyone, I'm Josh from Before, and we are here today to celebrate 5,000 subscribers, which is just a tremendous milestone. I'm super excited about it. Uh, to give you some context, I started this channel in January of 2021, and it was just about six months ago that we were hitting 2,000 subscribers. So in less than six months, uh, we're more than doubled in size. I don't want to get too lost in the woods with like chasing numbers, counting views, all that stuff, but the reality is more people watching means I can put more time into this channel. And like I've said in the past, my ongoing goal with the channel as it grows is to continue to bring you the kind of content that you came here for in the first place, meaning toy reviews. Uh, but I've also want to expand the scope of the channel, meaning I've added into the mix the weekly live streams where we dick around, play with toys, talk about toys, and talk about movies and comics and everything under the sun. Started doing weekly game streams where we're replaying through the Arkham Trilogy, which has been a blast so far. I'm doing videos about custom figures, I'm doing videos about the comic book I've been working on, and you out there you keep showing up to watch all these new videos that fall outside the realm of the standard toy reviews. And that keeps me motivated to keep being creative, keep it fresh, experiment with new kinds of videos. So I want to thank you, the viewers, for joining me on the road to 5,000 subscribers and beyond. And I hope that you are celebrating this channel's success along with me because you are all a part of it. So I want to talk about a few things today. Well, while we're talking about you, the viewers, I want to bring you up to speed on a relatively new ongoing feature which is the viewer shoutouts. So we all know that the McFarland DC Multiverse figures all come with these little black round hockey puck stands. And what I've started doing is every video, or as often as I can remember to do it, I write the name of a frequent commenter on one of these stands, give them a shout out, and welcome them to what we've been calling the Wall of Fame or the Hall of Fame. But I, I from the get go, I, I never really loved the Wall of Fame like as a name. I wanted something a little more unique and interesting. So I put it out in a poll for you at home to decide, and the choice has been made. The Wall of Fame will now be known as the From Before Figs Rogues Gallery. And here it is in all its glory. Lots of names on there already, many more to come. I'm sure we'll outgrow this in time, and we'll have to add more real estate uh, when we run out of room. Since we're looking at the Rogues Gallery right now, let's welcome the newest member. It's going to be Scott McClary, and I'll tell you why. When I put the poll up for choosing the new name for the Wall of Fame, the other option was Super Friends. And Scott was good enough to let me know that Brad, the DC Universe geek, calls his viewers Super Friends. And Brad, the DC Universe geek, is a great channel. I would not want to step on his toes at all. So thank you very much, Scott, for helping me avoid that faux pas. And thanks for being such a great friend of the channel. Let's hear it in the comments for Scott McClary. Okay, so I reached out to you guys with the poll for renaming the Wall of Fame. And I also reached out for you to submit questions. So let's do a quick little lightning round AMA, right? First up, I'm going to combine a couple questions here. Lee86 asks, do I still have any old figures from growing up days? And Young Tokyo asks, favorite figure of all time? And I think I'm going to answer both those questions with the same answer. It's going to be this Wolfman from the old Ghostbusters line. They did a, an entire wave of these classic sort of universal monsters. Wolf Wolfman here was was the best of the bunch in my book. He's got a great sculpt here. Uh, it's, it's really fun. A little uh, f play feature of like he, he squeezes the legs and he howls at the moon. The other thing I really love is that even though he has that sort of play feature, you can still move the arms and the legs. Uh, and it doesn't interfere with that. And... The Howl at the Moon works with his arms in any position. I mean, my, my thing about choosing favorites, my opinion might change from day to day. But today, uh, I'm calling Wolfie here the GOAT. So D Sniper asks, what are some of my biggest pet peeves with figures? And I can be really forgiving with toys, It kind of just depending on what the intent of the creator is. You know, if they want to prioritize the visual and, and forego better articulation, I can get on board with that. If, uh, you know, they want to do the opposite, they want to, if they want to be super articulated and sacrifice the look a little bit, I can, get, I can get down with that too. Generally, I can get pulled in by a wide variety of approaches to action figures, and I don't have this one particular perfect concept in my mind. But what really bugs me is the ongoing sort of reuse in parts 
and I'm not really singling out any one toy line. I think it happens with $20 retail figures. I think it happens with high-end sort of designer toys as well. And just what happens for me is it starts to feel like getting the same figure over and over again. You lose that sort of sense of fun discovery of, of what's it going to be when you take it out of the box and how's it going to move and how's, you know, the articulation going to suit this particular sculpt or character. So the, the, the fun discovery goes away and it just becomes a predictable thing. And that's part of what's brought me around with this DC Multiverse line is it just, they feel they, like they're fresh and fun as often as they can be without just reusing the same tooling or body bucks over and over again. Samo Productions asks, how do I come up with my poses? Any articulation tips I can give to give the figures more life? I, I love this question because the answer is really easy and literally anybody can do this. So your best friend for posing figures is Google Image Search. I like to look for parkour poses, martial arts poses. Like I just did a, a search for judo throws and ended up cranking out like a bunch of those little short videos I do with the posing. So use photo reference and use yourself. Act out the pose in the mirror and when you do that, think about where where, where would you have to balance, where would you put your weight if you were doing this pose and you're gonna get a just more realistic, more lifelike uh, pose in the figure. Ian Felipe Ortega Cabrera asks, what got you into toy collecting and what's my favorite movie? So Ian, I've been a lifelong toy fan. I never really stopped buying toys like when everybody else aged out. I, I bought toys all the way through high school into adulthood. I've never been what I consider it to be a huge collector, um, mostly because I just have a lot of other hobbies and hobbies are expensive, right? Like you just can't have it all in life. My collection right now with this whole room put together the way it is, this is about as big as my toy collection's ever been, uh, you know, since I was a kid. Uh, but then to answer your second question, my favorite movie of all time is Evil Dead 2. Dom Life asks, have we possibly seen any of the film projects I've worked on? So if you don't know, I've been working in video and animation for more than 15 years. But to answer your question, probably not. A lot of the commercial stuff I've done has been more regional, not full-blown national. And then most of the really big clients I've worked with, the work has been internal for like professional development or trade shows, things like that. Um, I've, I've done a little bit of reality television for HGTV, but that work wasn't really creative, you know. Birdo96 asks, what would I save in a fire? I think my most prized possession here is actually the, this Toy Biz cat, Bat Cave. It's not like my childhood one or anything, but I had that as a child, played with it to death. It's just one of my favorite things in here. I actually unboxed it on camera, so if you want to uh, see more of that, check out that video. Sam Tao asks, if I could pick any movie, TV series, or game to get a line of figures, what would it be? My dream toy line right now would be to see McFarlane do a entire Paul Verhoeven line. The Starship Troopers, Total Recall, and Robocop. I want Rackjack and Richter both, so I want two separate Michael Ironside figures. And I want all the Clendathu bugs. And then, of course, Robocop is just one of the best movies of all time. And then finally, Ska Knight and Aviator Dans, they ask, who inspired me to want to make a, a comic of my own? And do I have any advice for others who want to do the same? So if you're a new viewer, this is in reference to the comic book I've been working on called Drop Shadow, which is about a graphic designer vigilante. I've been hyping it up for a while. I will continue to hype it up as it gets finished. And I'll get into far more detail about the creation of it once the final product is printed and in my hand. But I'll give you a short answer right now. Uh, I've been a lifelong comic fan, especially big fan of indie comics of the 90s, where you could get this sense that it was just this small groups of people that were putting together something. Now, as a career and a creative hobby, both, I've, I've pursued filmmaking for a couple decades now. And I mean, the truth of the matter is low budget filmmaking, it can be very constraining. My friends and I, we have a lot of big ideas and I think we're really talented filmmakers, but, but there's a ceiling for what you can do on camera um, with limited means, you know what I mean? And comics don't have that constraint. Basically it costs the same amount to draw a spaceship as it does to draw two people talking in a, on a couch, right? 
So cut to lockdown, I had recently bought a, an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil and, I, and the Procreate app, and I wanted to kind of get my drawing skills sort of back up to snuff. And now I had an abundance of free time, and my friends and I, we had been talking about this idea, Drop Shadow, about this uh, character in this universe for a bit, and it was really amusing. And I, after using the Procreate app for a while, I decided, you know what, I really have everything I, in my hand that I need to create a comic book from start to finish. Uh, one that would hold up fairly well, I think, next to anything else on, on the shelf, you know, at, the, at your local comic shop. I mean, look, my art is pretty good. I know it's not going to hold up next to, like, some of the tremendous comic artists working today. I don't mean it like that. But I think it looks pretty good. And I'm saying that as somebody with pretty high standards of quality. Uh, I'm really excited about how it, it's turning out. I I'm, can't wait to show you more. Anyway, I, I know I said this would be a short answer. I have a lot more to share with you about that in the future. I'll probably do a video, multiple videos, actually, once I have the thing printed and in hand. I'll walk you through how it was made. We're going to be able to flip through a physical copy of the thing, which is going to be really, really exciting. And uh, I can give you as much insight as I possibly can about how it was created. And I'll have more information about how you could get a physical or digital copy of your own. So stay tuned for more info about that. So that wraps up the Q&A. If you submitted a question and I didn't answer it, I will probably be answering those in the future. So stay tuned, but I do want to move on to the final section, which is going to be a quick updated shelf tour. I've done a few shelf tours in the past, so if you want a more in-depth, longer one, check out those videos. And I also did a collection tour with my friend Danny, uh, who runs the channel Galactic Geek. Check out that video as well. So we'll take a quick lap around the room, and I'll just show you what the current layout of the shelves are. So let's just do that now, right? All right, so here is the main stage of the toy room here. I can let's start up top. That's an old Play Arts Kai liquid snake up there. A few NECA horror figures, 12 inch Angela, and the black spy from Spy vs. Spy. Actually, Galactic Geek has the white spy, meaning that we are locked forever in combat until one uh, or the other dies. In the middle here is the big Two-Face space. Uh, when I hit 2,000 subscribers, I showed off my, two, my Two-Face collection, so check out that video if you haven't seen it already. Come over here to Ikea Cabinet 1. Up top is a 3A Metal Gear. That's the smaller version. I have the larger version as well. I'm thinking about putting it on eBay. But I messed around with that larger Rex and Metal Gear Ray on... A uh, recent live stream, so catch up on that if you want to see those in action. Here up top, we've got the Hall of Armor shelf. Some of the choice Batman selections. Come down to the main shelf that you see in all the reviews. Right now, I, I tried to throw some recent figures on there to give it a little bit, bit of freshness. And I, they're on this uh, display that I got from Would You Kindly Studios, and I reviewed that. Check out that video. And of course, I just, I had to choose the dumbest person to put on the bike, and I went with Aquaman, and I think that is appropriately silly. Below here is sort of the rough template for the Rogues Gallery shelf. I just have a few selections in here, and they're not really too ambitiously posed. Once we've got more classic Rogues, this is going to be one of my favorite shelves for sure. And down here, I got... Some of the death metal figures and a base and a couple mega figs, build a figs. These are just some of my favorite figures that I don't want to remove from the shelf, but I don't have necessarily the coolest, freshest layout for that particular one. Now we'll come over here. I talked about this cabinet before in the past. This used to be an old TV. I took out the tube. I took out all the electronic components of the, the guts of the speakers and uh, threw some kind of cheesy upholstery on there. And I can show you what used to be parts of the old record player. I've now just turned this into storage. And then, of course, my beloved Batmo Beast here, which I rigged up, put it on a Lazy Susan, and they got lights on it. Display rotates. I did a, a video on how I sort of put this together. I'm getting closer to phase two of my Batmo Beast build here, so expect another video about this guy in the future. 
And then the Toy Biz Bat Cave, my friend just gave me this uh, T-Rex and I'm gonna put him somewhere cool. I need a giant penny now though. And then Ikea cabinet number two, some odds and ends up here. These are all custom fodder pieces. Spawn throne needs to get integrated into the spawn shelf, but I love the spawn shelf and the plaque from the Kickstarter spawn there. And now coming down here, these are all customs, custom Marvel Legends for the most part uh, that were used for the comic book that I'm working on, Drop Shadow. These are all characters from Drop Shadow. I've got a video where I go through how I made these and who the characters are. And I also did another video about the city diorama that we built to photograph these figures for a two page fake toy ad. That's gonna be a, a spread in the comic book. Now come down to more customs here. This is the, the barest shelf so far, but eventually this is gonna be totally full of customs. We've got my Kenner Toy Biz ones there, Tech Shield Batman, Sky Escape Joker, and Bob the Goon, and the newest edition, which is Drophead from the Matt Reeves Batman movie. And then finally down here is the Dark Knights. These guys have been holding it down on this shelf since I finished this team. This was the first significant team we were able to complete from the multiverse line and I love the way they fill out that shelf. I think there's some room for some more Joker uh, crows down there, but but yeah, that's the gist of the toy room right now. All right, gang, this has been the 5,000 subscribers special video. Thank you again to everyone for your ongoing support. We have many more videos to come. If you're a new viewer and you wanna catch up on some stuff from the past, I've, there are more than 250 videos on this channel. Like I said, more than just reviews as well. Uh, there's all kinds of different stuff, and if you want to go to my channel homepage where I have things organized by playlists, so hopefully you can navigate those a little bit easier. If you want to throw something on while you're playing in your toy room at home, check out the backlog. There are a ton of cool videos in there. That's it, gang. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you all very soon.